When I was younger, around the age of 10 till I was like 15, I desperately wanted to be special. I wanted to be so good at something that it would make me stand out from the rest of my peers. I wasn't really good at school related stuff, my grades weren't really the best around with math and English being absolutely horrific. To say I was an average student was a stretch. But nonetheless, I still searched for something that made me special. I tried all sorts of things until I eventually found something I was pretty good at. Running. I was the fastest guy in my class, heck, I could even outspeed some of my seniors, and it felt great having that one thing I could say made me special. I was so good at running that it reached a point where people didn't even want to run against me anymore because they knew they'd lose. I was known as a guy who could run really, really fast. Needless to say, this only helped to bloat up my ego and made me seriously consider becoming an athlete. My grades were still pretty average though, but that didn't matter anymore because I could run and that was all I needed to be special. But eventually I started running less and less. It just didn't feel good anymore and I stopped feeling special because of it. So I continued my search to find something I could use to feel special. Something to label myself as. But then that all changed when I came across a certain enemy that in a way pulled me out of the very dangerous path I was headed. That being Mob Psycho 100. Mob Psycho is an anime and manga series written by the author One, the same man behind One Punch Man. It follows the life of Shigeo Kageyama, aka Mob, a middle schooler born with insane psychic powers. But while Mob possesses these insane powers and is virtually the strongest person in the show, his powers are sort of like a burden to him. They're closely linked to his emotions and in order for Mob to keep his powers in check, he constantly has to keep a lid on his emotions. Now Mob is a pretty mellow and awkward boy who is pretty below average in everything like academics, sports and doesn't really have friends. You'd think that having psychic powers would make him the center of everything, right? Wrong. Mob is a reactionary protagonist, which means the plot usually brings him along rather than him pushing the plot, which happens in every arc of the overall story. One of the main questions the series tackles is, what makes a person special? Mob, who was born with these powers, has never really seen them as something that made him special. If anything, he sees them as something that makes him far from even normal. He tries to go on with his life as normally as possible, not even trying to use his powers to become some kind of superhero or the center of attention, which is the opposite of what young boys with supernatural abilities usually do all across media. Even before the series starts, Mob realizes that there are just some things his power cannot do for him and wounds lead him to a fulfilling life which he so desires. Mob isn't the only one with psychic abilities however, as during the series we're introduced to other people with them, known as espers, all of which have the opposite mindset to Mob. The first being Hanazawa Teruki, aka Teru, who is also a middle schooler from a different school. Teru, like Mob, was naturally born with psychic powers and this has led him to believe that he was special, truly cut above the rest with seeing himself as the protagonist of the world and using only his powers for pretty much everything. Throughout his life, he had never met another Esper until he met Mob, and the moment he did, rather than be excited at meeting someone similar to him, he immediately greets Mob with hostility. To Teru, Mob's very existence goes against everything he's ever believed in throughout his whole life. He realizes that he wasn't one of a kind, he wasn't truly special to everyone, and if that one person saw him as an average guy, that meant he was a lot smaller in the world than he thought he was. Teru isn't the only one who feels this way about having powers though. Pretty much all other antagonists who have psychic powers follow this exact mindset. They see themselves as a higher breed of humans who should have those below them grovel at their feet. They want to be special. Mob Psycho 100 handles what it means to be special in a very different way as opposed to other forms of media. It is a common trope in media for the main lesson to be about how everyone is special in their own way. As Barney the Dinosaur once sang, Everyone is special, everyone in his or her own way. Please don't cringe. But when they talk about being special, it's taken from an angle on how you're special to others. What factors and traits do you have that lets people perceive you as special? Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about loved ones seeing you as special, but rather how society sees you as special. What it means to be special is a topic that's mostly found in media geared towards kids and usually ends with the message that being yourself is what really makes you special. That's fine and all, but the message can end up being detrimental to young minds. Kids are very easy to influence, and that kind of message can lead to constantly having to be validated by others as special. They say that everyone is special in their own way. 
So that means if everyone is special, then nobody's special. So that means to truly be special, you gotta have a little exceptional thing that takes you from being an SR unit to an SSR unit. It was a mindset I unfortunately had while I was a teenager. In Mob Psycho, however, they straight up tell you that you aren't really special. While you may be good at something, it's just an extension of you that doesn't really change the fact that you are still an average person like the rest of us. It takes the concept of being special to be nothing but a delusion that people use to make themselves feel better. That no matter what you think you have that makes you special, it's only really a novelty that will eventually wear off as time passes. And in the end, society really doesn't care about that and will just move on from your specialty. It's a very real depiction of how the real world works. Take people who have been the face of memes for example. Sure, they get some kind of popularity from being a meme, but eventually the meme dies and trying to continue as the face of that meme just gets you labeled as cringe. Mob Psycho 100 argues that rather than aim to be special to others, we should just try to be special to ourselves and try to live a fulfilling life in a way that doesn't harm us or those around us. While you may be good at something, that doesn't mean you should rely on it as the only way to bring happiness into your life. It's sort of like a unique take on optimistic nihilism. Which is the belief that since life has no meaning and everything is ultimately pointless, you're free to attach whatever meaning you want to life and find happiness however you choose. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content. This has been your very favorite slice of bread, signing off.